The concept of spectator ions comes up really frequently in chemistry. So in this video, we'll look at a definition and examples, and we'll give you some practice identifying spectator ions. So when we have a chemical reaction like the one here, we have our soluble substances. They'll say AQ. That means they're aqueous and dissolved in water. Then we'll have things like solids, liquids, and gases. Here we have a solid. So this is actually just a solid at the bottom of the test tube after this reaction. If we break this up into the ions, just the ones that are aqueous and soluble, this is what we get. So this is what's called a complete ionic equation. It shows all of the ions, and then it shows any solids here like this that we didn't split up. When we're talking about spectator ions, we're looking for things that are the same on both sides. So pause and try to figure out what's the same on both sides of this complete ionic equation. Those will be the spectator ions. I didn't write aqueous for everything, I just showed the solid here, but all of these would be aqueous. So I have Ba2 plus here, nothing on this side like that. This is bonded to the sulfate. Chlorides, I have two chlorides here and here. So these are spectator ions, and we would cross those out. We're not really interested in those. Two potassium ions here in the reactants and in the products. These are spectator ions, get rid of those. And then what's left, that's what we call a net ionic equation. That would look like this. In our net ionic equation, we don't have spectator ions. Let me write the states in. So we have these two aqueous ions. They come together. We get this barium sulfate, which is a solid. It's a precipitate. It falls to the bottom of the test tube. Spectator ions are the same on both sides. So pause and identify the spectator ions here in the complete ionic equation. This is our original equation. It's already balanced. Here's our complete ionic. What are the spectator ions? As we look at it, we have Fe here and Fe2+. Plus. Those are different. We have a solid, aqueous. Those aren't spectator ions. Same for the copper. These are different. The only thing that's the same, that's the sulfate ion. This is the spectator ion. If we cross these out, what's left would be a net ionic equation. Let's try another one. First, let me balance this. You have to balance this molecular equation first before you work with ions. I think a three here and a three here. So now we've balanced this, and I should put my states in as well. So here I've split them up into the ions, and everything's aqueous except for this iron three hydroxide. That's a solid. And notice how these subscripts here, they show up again when we write the ions. That's important. We need to balance the equation because it'll show up here as well. So pause and identify the spectator ions. I have three chloride ions here and right there. Those are spectator ions, three sodium ions, three sodium ions. And what's left, that's the net ionic equation. So identifying the spectator ions is pretty easy. They're the same on both sides. And we know the ions, those will have the plus and minus after them. But it's a little more challenging to know which ones are aqueous and which ones are solids. And then how do you know these charges for each of the substances? So let's take a look at an example and explain how we do that. So there are two ways to figure the states out for each substance. The first is memorize the solubility rules. This is pretty helpful. So we see that here, the nitrate ion, NO3 minus, pretty much soluble all the time. That means it'll dissolve. So anything with the nitrate after it, that's going to be AQ, potassium nitrate over here. So that's easy. We can also see group one elements like this potassium here. They're going to be soluble. So we can write an AQ here. So all we have left to figure out is this lead to iodide. The solubility rules tell us when we have something like iodine, in general, it's going to be soluble unless it's bonded to lead, silver, or mercury. So this is insoluble. It's not going to dissolve. Because of that, it's going to be a solid. That means it's going to sink to the bottom of the test tube as a precipitate. So when these two substances react, we get the solid. So this is probably the best way to figure out what the states are for each substance. You can also use a solubility table if you're allowed by your instructor. But the solubility rules are usually quicker and more effective. Let's figure out about the ions next. When we're finding the charge on ions, we have polyatomic ions like the nitrate. You have to be able to recognize them. Some teachers let you use a chart like this where you can see the nitrate ion has a negative charge. Others want you to memorize it. I would recommend memorizing things like nitrate, sulfate, some of the common ones. So, we know that the nitrate is going to have a negative charge. Since there are two of them, that means the lead is going to have to be 2 plus. 
Lead's a transition metal, we don't always know its charge. For these other elements here, we'll need to look at the periodic table. So on the periodic table, we didn't see lead because it's a transition metal, we had to figure it out. But for potassium, that's right here in group one, that'll be one plus iodine right here, over here, group 17, 7a, that'll have a negative charge. And now we can split these up into their ions pretty easily. We could say we have Pb2+, plus, and I won't write aqueous each time, plus two nitrate ions, plus we have two of the potassium ions, and the two goes to everything, so we have two iodide ions. And those are the reactants. In the products, we don't split solids, liquids, or gases apart. So we're just going to have that PbI2, which would be a solid, and then we have two potassium ions plus two nitrate ions. So now we're back to just identifying our spectator ions. Pause, see if you can figure out which of these are spectator ions. So we have two nitrate ions in the reactants and two in the products. These haven't changed, they're spectator ions. We can cross those out. Two potassium ions here, and then in the products, two potassium ions. Those are good. So these are the spectator ions in this reaction. If I want the net ionic equation, I just remove these, write in the states, clean it up a bit, and with those spectator ions removed, I only have what changed in the chemical reaction. And what's nice is you can check if you're right. You have two plus and then two times one minus. Two plus and two minus, that adds up to zero. This is a neutral compound, so its charge all adds up to zero. If you count the atoms up, they're balanced. That's a good way to check. So we found the spectator ions, we crossed them out, and we were left with the net ionic equation. Let's give you one more practice problem and we'll be done. So pause and figure out which compounds are soluble, then I'll put the periodic table up and you can figure out the charge as well. So everything's aqueous except for the silver chloride. Let's look at the periodic table. So we have the charges, now split it apart into its ions. Note this equation's already balanced. So these are the ions, and the only thing we have that's solid is silver chloride. Everything else is aqueous. Cross out the spectator ions, and you'll have that net ionic equation. Here the spectator ions are the nitrate ion and the sodium ion. And this is our net ionic equation. You'll note that charge is conserved. We have a plus and a minus here in the reactants. They balance out to zero, and this is a neutral compound. So that's balanced, and the atoms, they're balanced as well. That's our net ionic equation, and these, those are the spectator ions that we've crossed out. So to develop these skills and be able to identify spectator ions, you need lots of practice. So at the end of this video, there's a link for more practice on how to do these types of equations, and in the description as well, links to finding solubility and determining the charge on ions. This is Dr. B with examples, definitions, and some practice identifying spectator ions. Thanks for watching.